He'll do anything big or small. Nothing is impossible for a super wonderful God. Every day I can know God is always there for me and my family. Every day I can know greater is the one who lives inside. And I'm Marco. Hey Marco. Hey. Today's lesson made me think of a really fun game that we haven't played in quite a while. Oh my goodness, Miss yeah. Iris, I love playing games. You do? Yeah, let's do oh, it. Oh, okay. Well, this one is Would You Rather. Oh, I love that I game. I know, so do I. And I picked three special questions. My favorite that I think, number. <laughs> that I think you and the kids at home will really enjoy. Oh, that's great. So let's kids do it. at home, I'm going to give you two questions and you have to pick which one of them you would rather have. Are you yeah. ready? Oh yeah, I'm ready. Okay them down they're really really good nice. all right marco yes kids at home would you rather have three eyes oh. or two noses ah uh, three eyes or two noses yeah three eyes or two noses ah uh, well i think the most important part about this question yes is if i had another nose uh -huh. or another eye where would i put it mm, that is a good question there's not a lot of room on this face for <laughs> for extra body parts you know i think the only place is right here on my forehead Okay. And if I put a nose there, I think my hair would tickle it and I would be sneezing all the time all over the place. <laughs> I think you might be. But. Yes. Hmm. If I put an eye on my forehead. Yeah. Then it would always be in my hair and I couldn't see anything. No, but that's true. So I'm going to say. Okay. If I got to pick one. It's a dilemma. It is very difficult. But <laughs> that is why you bring Marco to play these games. Because I know that if I was sneezing everywhere. It would probably help me move faster. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> boop, boop, boop. <laughs> That's what I think. Oh, so two noses. Two noses. Two one, noses. One right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Kids at home, what did you say? All right, Marco, here's yeah. my next one. Okay. All right. Would you rather have no knees oh. or no elbows? My elbows. Kids at home, what do you think? Miss Iris, yes? you know my favorite part of my body is my knees. It is. Everywhere I go, I'm always showing them off my knees. I'm always like, hey, check them out. Check out my <laughs> knees, guys. 
Marco, I'm pretty sure that I've never seen your knees. Oh, well, sometime you gotta check them out. <laughs> They're incredible, I can never give up my knees. <laughs> All right, so you're picking you would rather have? I would have no elbows. My arms would just be like this forever. <laughs> I what think that'd I... be fine. You think so? Yeah. All right, kids at home, what did you think? All right, here's the last one. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, last one. Would you rather... Oh, I'm so excited. Yes. Have one big foot. Uh, oh. <laughs> or one big hand. Oh. I just got what one hand that's real big? Yes, one really big hand or one really big foot. I think with one hand I could finally be the volleyball star I always wanted to be. <laughs> so I'm going one big hand. And what will you do? Just hop on the one foot? I'm why well, I thought I'd get to keep my two feet <laughs> and I get one big hand. Right? Well, I guess that's true. Yeah, and then I would serve with it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, kids at home, what did you say? I hope that your answers were as funny and clever as Mr. Marco's. Oh, I'm like, sure they were. The time. Yes. That was <laughs> oh, a fun Mr. game. Mr. Marco, it was a fun game. It reminded me of my lesson because today oh. in our lesson, we're yeah. going to be talking about, well, we're going to look at the book of First Corinthians, oh. chapter 12. Wow. And in that book, it actually says that we are the body of Christ. A bot? What? Is this some kind of like magic trick or illusion or something you're going to be showing us? No, not at all. And we're also going to talk about how to be the church. The church? Like like the building? No, not like the building. What? No, in the Bible it says that we, God's people, are the body of Christ and that we, his followers, yeah. are the church. Hmm. Miss Iris, I got to admit, I don't think I really understand what you're talking about. <laughs> How can we be a building and a body all at the same time? That doesn't really seem possible. Well, Are you sure you got the right lesson for today? Can I see your paper? <laughs> I think I have the right lesson for today. Okay. Well, I think the kids and I are going to be paying special attention to the lesson this week. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. All right, I'm excited. Let's do yes, it. Yes, all right. The church is the building we go to when we want to learn about God. Nope, this is a church. Those are people. Yep, in fact, it's you and me. You kinda lost me. The church isn't a building. The church is the people who have made Jesus the leader of their lives. And that's us. We don't go to church, we are the church. And we exist for the world. Oh, okay. I still don't get it. Let's look in the book of Acts. That's where the Bible talks about the very first church, the people who first believed in Jesus. They didn't have buildings to meet in, so they met where they could, usually in people's homes. So their church was a house? Nope, the church met in houses. Even then, the church was the people. And the apostles taught them many things about God. They did great and wonderful things with God's power. God did amazing things through everyone in the church. Through all the people? How? The people of early church put others first. They prayed together, they shared meals, they shared their time, they shared everything. Everything? Really? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. The Bible tells us that when one of them needed something, others shared what they had. They even sold things and used the money to help out. That's amazing. That's putting others first. The early church was really good at it. For instance, this one guy, Joseph, sold a field and brought the money to the people of the church to help those who needed it. Awesome! What made them do that? They all agreed. They all wanted to live like Jesus, and the apostles told them how Jesus put others first when he died on the cross and went up to heaven. The early church learned about Jesus and lived like him, so they put others first. I think I get it. Great, but you haven't heard the best part. When others saw how those first church people lived, it made them want to follow Jesus too. In fact, more people decided to follow Jesus every single day. Wow, God did do amazing things through the first church people. And God still does amazing things through his people when they live like Jesus and put others first. Right, because we are the church. And we exist for the world. Hey kids, we're gonna talk about what it means to be part of the church and the body of Christ. But in order to do that, I'm going to need help from somebody and from some body parts to explain today's lesson. Now, a body has got lots of different parts. It's got eyes, noses, 
ears, legs, arms, a mouth. Well, you, you get the picture. And it's got a lot of inside parts as well, like your heart and your stomach and eardrums and lungs and, and your brain. Well, maybe that one doesn't, but we need each and every part that makes up our body so that we can function. It says in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, that just like a body has lots of different parts, the church is like a body made up of lots of different parts. You know, we're all very different and that's not by accident. And that's the way God designed us. None of us is the same. Each one of us is a special gift from God. Each one of you is unique. And each one of you is special. And each one of you is a masterpiece, a one of a kind creation of God. And just like in a human body, all the different parts of the body of Christ come together to work as a whole. Now the body only works well if all the body parts are different. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 through 27 say, The body is one unit and yet it has many parts. As all the parts form one body, so it is with Christ. The human body is not made up of only one part, but of many parts. Suppose a foot says, I'm not a hand, so I'm not part of the body. Would that mean that it's no longer part of the body? Or suppose that an ear says, hey, I'm not part of an eye, so I'm not part of the body. Would that mean that it's no longer part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, well, how could it hear? And if the whole body were an ear, uh, how could it smell? So God put each and every part of the body together as he wanted it. I mean, how could it be a body if it only had one part? So there are many parts, but one body. And I can't say to a hand, I don't need you. Or again, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. And the opposite is true. The parts of the body that we think are weaker are the ones we really need. God's purpose was that the body should not be divided, but rather that all of its parts should feel the same concern for each other. If one part of the body suffers, well, all the other parts, they share in its suffering. And if one part is praised, well, all the others share in its happiness. You are Christ's body, and each of you is an individual part of it. When we come together, we are better and function better than we do when we are alone.
hey kids, do you know that you are uniquely made to be part of the church and to serve God and to serve others? That each one of us was given different gifts and talents for the kingdom of God. Not all of us are alike, and that's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, can you imagine if we were all preachers and we showed up on Sunday morning and everybody tried to, to give the lesson or do the service that morning? Or what if every one of us showed up and we all wanted to make coffee on Sunday morning? What would the church look like then? Or what if like everybody showed up and they all wanted to work in the nursery? Well, actually that one wouldn't be too bad, would it? But anyway, each one of you was created to be part of the church. Alone you can do good things, but together we can do great things. I want you to see these little toothpicks that I put on this plate. I took five toothpicks and I broke them in half and I placed them next to each other on this plate. And I'm, with this dropper of water, I'm going to drop some water in between the toothpicks and we're gonna watch and see what happens. Because do you see that? They're actually moving. They're making something different than they were before. They're coming together and they're creating a star. That's because the water, when it came between them, it actually pushed the sides of the toothpicks and the toothpicks leaned on each other and came to a point and they created that star. You know that we can do good things on our own, but we can do great things together. Just like these toothpicks with the water. Just like us when we have each other in the Holy Spirit.
Hey kids, thanks for joining us this week. Please bow your heads and close your eyes as we close in prayer. Dear Father, thank you for making each and every one of us different and unique. You are a wonderful creator. You tell us that each and every one of us is important to you and to your kingdom. Help us to work together as your church, as one body, to serve you and to serve others. Thank you for giving us gifts and talents. Show us how to use them to help others and how to love others and show us how to tell them about who you are. You are a good father who loves his children. Amen. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.